We all like to see happy children with a healthy smile. Unfortunately, their appearance and their self-confidence can sometimes be ruined by rotten teeth affected by tooth decay. Dental decay is one of the most common childhood diseases in the world. The good news is it can be prevented. The aim of this film is to show that it's far easier to set good habits from an early age than it is to change bad ones when a child is older. Everything we eat and drink can have an effect on both our general and our dental health. And there are easy steps we can take to give our children the best chance of healthy teeth and a beautiful smile. Milk teeth are important for lots of reasons. They help us eat and grow. Help us speak. Smile. It's never too early to start teaching children about the importance of looking after their teeth. Caroline Cox is a health improvement practitioner who goes into schools and preschools promoting awareness of good oral hygiene. The emphasis is on getting children involved and educating them through having fun. Wiggle, 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 flick, 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 don't let the germs Stick, stick, stick. Well done. I feel it's really important that they get involved with the activities. Um, they can take home information to their parents by talking about looking after their teeth, how to brush their teeth correctly. There are lots of ways to promote good oral hygiene to this age group. The important thing is to start giving them key messages early on. I think the most effective thing is the fun. They enjoy interaction, they love to have hands on and to take on board the puppets and the role play. I think that just it, it cements it a little bit better. About 40% of families don't give their children the best start by taking them to a dentist regularly. The rate of dental decay in the under fives has remained pretty much the same over the last decade and in Devon hundreds of children every year have such bad teeth that they have to have them removed under general anaesthetic an operation which carries its own risks for their health and well-being. Having a healthy mouth is part of the big picture. Uh, a healthy mouth has huge implications for our general health and vice versa. Take obesity for instance. It's becoming much more widespread but uh, obesity is linked to people not exercising and also having an unhealthy diet. Frequently consuming sugary snacks also leads to tooth decay as well as obesity. So the important thing is to keep sugary snacks to mealtimes only. Uh, also, eating lots of sugary snacks can lead to diabetes, and that diabetes in turn has effect on gum disease, so it's all linked. So it's important to look after your child's uh, healthy mouth and make sure they look after the teeth and their gums because of the implications for their general health as well. Teething is a normal part of every child's development. Baby teeth are important for the development of speech. They're also necessary to chew nutritious food to ensure children grow properly. The first milk tooth usually breaks through at about six months old, though it can be earlier, and new teeth can continue coming through until about three years of age. The first teeth to appear are usually the, the lower front teeth at about six months, uh, and then the upper front teeth appear shortly after that. Um, and normally the baby will show signs of discomfort um, and might chew on things. Um, sometimes they get a bit of a flush on the face. Um, they might get a little bit of a, a temperature um, and, and generally just be a bit grisly. Um, and to, to help, you can sometimes get them to chew on something cold, um, a teething ring, put in the fridge, um, a cold flannel um, or just kind of uh, things to, to bite on really um, but if, if the baby's showing signs of distress and, and a high fever um, and generally unwell and unhappy then it might be worth seeing a dentist or a doctor to get a, a second opinion. Dental care needs to start as soon as the first tooth appears. From that point on teeth should be cleaned twice a day, last thing at night and at one other time. The best position to see the teeth is with the baby lying down or cradled in your arms. You can use gauze or a clean cloth to wipe round the gums initially. But it's a good idea to start using a soft toothbrush with just a smear of fluoride toothpaste as soon as the first tooth comes through.
This will make sure that the teeth get cleaned, but also that your child gets used to the toothbrush. You can find more advice about how to brush your baby's teeth and which toothpaste to use in Chapter 5 of this film. Tooth decay, or holes in the teeth, is a serious and potentially painful dental condition which can start soon after the first tooth appears, but it can be prevented. I think once a hole forms, um, it can develop quite quickly if, if the child's having a lot of sugar um, and is not cleaning the teeth adequately. So it would be worth getting a, a dentist to see the hole or getting an opinion. And you'd really want to be seeing a dentist within um, the first year. It's important to brush teeth regularly and well to prevent the build-up of a white, sticky layer called plaque. Our mouth contains millions of bacteria, which are tiny bugs. Some of them are good, but there are also loads of bad bacteria that can damage our teeth. Bad bacteria in the plaque change the sugar into acid, which eats away at our teeth and causes holes or cavities in them. Decay starts with either a white patch or a dark stain on the tooth. Left untreated, the enamel that protects teeth starts to break down. This shows as brown or yellow areas and later holes. This four-year-old child is already showing the early signs of tooth decay. He has two cavities in his back bottom molars. The enamel on the top teeth is chipped and also showing signs of wear. He needs to see a dentist regularly from now on to reduce the likelihood of the decay becoming considerably worse. These photos show just how bad decay can get, even in very young children. You can really help prevent tooth decay by... Not giving us sugary snacks and unhealthy drinks in between meals and brushing our teeth twice a day. With fluoride toothpaste. You might not think that looking after your baby's milk teeth is as important as the care of their permanent teeth because of course they're going to lose them anyway between the ages of about 6 and 13. But keeping their teeth healthy in their early years will get them used to good habits and have a huge influence on their general and dental health later on. Decay can start from a very early age. What babies are fed can lead them to develop a taste for sweet things and increase the exposure of their young teeth to damaging sugars. For the first months of a child's life, breastfeeding provides all the essential nutrients your baby needs. If possible, breastfeed exclusively for the first six months. We understand that not all new mothers can breastfeed, and if you can't, use infant formula or cooled, boiled water. Only put milk or water in the baby's feeding bottle. You'll also encourage extensive decay by putting sugary drinks or fruit juice in their bottle, or adding sugar to drinks. When your baby's put down to sleep at night or during the day, make sure they're not left with a bottle to calm them. This will also help prevent decay. From six months, children can start drinking milk or water from a cup. You can start with a training cup that has two handles, a snap-on or screw-on lid, and no valve. There are a large and often confusing variety of training cups, also called sippy cups or tippy cups. We don't recommend no spill cups. These are nothing more than baby bottles in disguise. The only way a child can get liquid from a cup with a valve is by sucking, like from a baby bottle. This defeats the purpose. It stops your child from learning to sip. Ideally, stop bottle feeding from the age of one. Any longer makes it more difficult for the baby to learn how to sip. When it's time to move on from milk, don't add salt to weaning foods and don't add sugar as it encourages a sweet tooth and contributes to decay. Avoid honey for the first year as it contains sugar and bacteria. Many people don't realise that although they are natural products, honey, fresh fruit juice and dried fruit all contain the type of sugars or acid which can lead to tooth decay. For the sake of their teeth, we don't recommend dummies, although we understand that sometimes you may have to resort to using them. If you do, avoid dipping dummies or teething rings into sweet substances, particularly at bedtime. If a dummy's dropped, clean it off with water rather than putting it in your mouth because you may transfer bacteria to your baby. Orthodontic dummies are available, which won't cause teeth to grow out of line.
These are the kinds of foods many children love to eat but are really harmful to their teeth if they're eaten too often. There are two main causes of tooth decay. Frequently eating and drinking lots of sugary food and drinks and not brushing their teeth twice a day with fluoride toothpaste. When we eat sugar, um, any bacteria on our teeth produces acid for roughly about 20 minutes after we've had the sugar intake. Um, and the acid will eat away at the surface of the tooth and cause holes and pitting. Um, so it's not really the amount of sugar that we're eating, it's more the frequency um, with which we have sugar. I cannot stress how important it is for people to give children a healthy uh, start and a, a chance to have healthy milk teeth. Uh, parents also can provide a good example by attending the dentist regularly, by flossing and brushing, and also eating a healthy diet and drinking healthy snacks and healthy drinks. Uh, I think children who uh, grew up knowing that teeth are important are much more likely uh, to look after them. There are five key messages to help prevent tooth decay and keep your child's mouth healthy. Eat well, drink well, clean well, play well and stay well. The following chapters of this film will show you how to do all of these. There we go. Children aren't born with a sweet tooth. It's influenced by their diet. You'll be doing them and their teeth a huge favour if you teach them how to eat and drink well in their early years. They need to have lots of different foods to make a healthy diet, eaten in the proportion shown in the Eat Well plate. Sugary and sticky snacks and drinks, the purple bit of the Eat Well plate, including sweets, produce a lot of acid, so they're best eaten with meals, not in between. Also, try to limit how much you give. Small children do need about five to six mini meals a day, though. Try to give them foods that won't damage their teeth in between main meals, like cheese, vegetable sticks or fresh fruit. And here's something you might not know. Raw fruit contains only natural sugars, which are better for you. Once it's prepared or processed by being cooked, dried or pureed, it releases different sugars. So try to serve fresh fruit as much as possible. Sugary drinks are really bad for teeth when they're sipped slowly or swished around in the mouth before swallowing. It's also advisable to have an hour free of food and drink before bed. You need to be very aware of food labelling. It can be very confusing. The higher that sugar is in list of ingredients means that there's more of it. Low sugar just means that there's less sugar than there is in the average product. And no added sugar means that it can be sweetened with you know, fruit concentrate or something like that. Basically, any ingredients that end in O's, O-S-E can be fructose, sucrose or dextrose. They're normally sugars. Fizzy drinks contain acid, which produces the bubbles, which is very harmful for teeth. You really can't beat water, especially between meals, and it's good for children to see parents drinking the same as them. Once the tooth comes through, we should be carrying out a, an oral health regime. We should be um, brushing the teeth roughly twice a day um, using a fluoride toothpaste with uh, a thousand parts per million fluoride. Um, it'll often say so on, on, a t on the tube how much fluoride there is in there. The amount of fluoride is very important. The fluoride helps to strengthen the surface of the teeth uh, against acid attack. So it's useful to have fluoride in the toothpaste, um, but you don't want too much because if you ingest the toothpaste, it can cause brown flecks and spots on the, the, old, the adult teeth at a later date. From about the age of three, start using a pea-sized amount of toothpaste and increase the fluoride content to greater than 1,350 ppm. Check the amount on the tube. It's better not to wet the brush before adding the toothpaste. Young children aren't able to brush their teeth properly on their own, so you'll need to help them until they're about eight years old. To brush well, start with the toothbrush at an angle of 45 degrees to the teeth, with the bristles in contact with the tooth surface and the gum line. Gently brush the outer surfaces using small circular motions. Move the brush to the next two to three teeth and repeat. Work slowly round the mouth in this way, overlapping each area and keeping the bristles angled at 45 degrees. Repeat for the inside surfaces. If you're using an electric brush, hold at the gum line and use in the same way, but let it do the work. Next, place the brush against the biting surfaces of the teeth and use a gentle back and forth scrubbing motion. Finally, Tilt the brush vertically behind the front teeth. 
Make sure your child spits out any excess yeah. toothpaste, but they shouldn't yeah. rinse after brushing. This will make sure that the fluoride stays on the teeth for longer. Brushing teeth and gums is important. Um, it helps to protect against gum disease. Um, even at an early age, you can get a little bit of inflammation in the gums, which will cause bleeding. So regular brushing of both teeth and gums uh, is a useful thing. We all know that children learn about the world through playing and exploring, but they don't always think about safety first. Accidents happen, but if your child does hurt their mouth or teeth, get advice straight away. All too often, dentists don't see young children until they're in pain, have an infection or holes in their teeth. It's really important to take them for regular checkups as soon as their first tooth comes through, so that your dentist can spot early signs of trouble and treat it before the teeth need removing. Your child will soon get used to these visits and learn that there's nothing to worry about if they brush well and eat healthily. You can also talk to your health visitor about tooth decay and how to prevent it when your child has their routine health checks as a baby, a toddler and before they start school. They'll be able to show you how you can regularly check for tooth decay at home and will refer you to a dental practice if there's a problem. If your child does need medication, choose a sugar-free one. They're easy to get. If you're unsure, just ask the pharmacist or doctor. If you follow the advice in this film, you'll be laying great foundations to help the under fives in your life have healthy teeth and a healthy mouth. Here's a quick recap of the key messages, not from me, but from the little ones. Have regular checkups. To make sure the dentist can spot decay early and give healthy messages. Brush last thing at night and at a one another time with a fluoride toothpaste. Spit out what's left. But don't rinse with water. Keep sugary food and drinks to meal times. Have safe snacks in between. Look after your teeth and you have lots of smiles.